Hey, Mike here with 3Print. And this is a video I've been trying to uh, produce for a while. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I had somebody that was in a bind and needs to replace their printed. Uh, so I made one really quick. I just wanted to note before you uh, attempt to uh, try to repair your printer that a lot can go wrong uh, when you're inside the head carriage area. If you get any type of ink or anything on the head connectors, not only could you ruin that brand new print head, but you could also ruin uh, the main board and many other things. So you gotta be make sure you're very careful. Uh, but I'm confident if you watch this video to the end, uh, your chances of success are much much greater uh hopefully you enjoy the video it's uh pretty in-depth it's a long video but make sure you watch it and if you haven't done so please do me a favor like and subscribe to my channel it's very important to me and with that being said uh let's go ahead and jump into the repair all right this video is for my buddy in trinidad and tobago uh gonna be replacing his uh print head and his sp 540b so figured i'd take a second and show you some things to avoid so you can make sure you're not ruining your machine so this will be helpful to anybody uh watching this video number one make sure there is no power you never want to mess with these cables or anything inside this head carriage area when there's power to it so make sure you uh unplug the power cord and i like just in good practice just to uh hit the power button this one has a funny screen to it it's got some some weird stuff going on you can see it says it's effing busy go away uh, somebody created this this actually was the property of action art uh, if you're not familiar with action art they was a pretty big company back in the day not sure uh where they stand now but uh go ahead and hit that power button discharge discharge any type of electricity that could be left in the machine very important all right now when it comes to the head carriage area it's very vital we do not get any type of liquid ink inside any of these connectors if you do uh you're gonna have to make sure they're cleaned out and get some electrical cleaner and clean everything out let it dry properly before attempting to power it on now for some reason people think that ink isn't conductive i see lots of machines that are inky mess and they wonder why the uh, main board and other things are screwed up it's because ink is conductive it gets into the connector it's no different than water if you spilled water on your printer you wouldn't power it on it remains true with ink so make sure you don't get any ink anywhere uh, we want to make sure these cables right here we pull nice and straight, pull them straight out and always inspect the connectors. Make sure that there's no bent pins before putting them back in there. And whenever you put them in there, make sure nice and straight, get it all aligned and then push. Always recommend uh, also double checking these connections before powering on the machine. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those out of here. Bam, nice and straight, nice and straight. Wearing gloves, make sure we're not making a mess. All right, now that we're in here, we wanna take and pull these cap, cap tops straight up. If uh, you pull them from the, from an angle, they could break the nipples of the manifolds. So very important, pull straight up and we wanna make sure they do not get on anything else. I highly recommend taking paper towels and covering your ink connector ports to make sure nothing happens if you're gonna reuse a head. Uh, so that's pretty important. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these and pull them to the side, let them hang. I'm gonna grab my yellow again, pulling straight up, straight up. All right, so there we have it. Now we can see there are these screws and this one is actually missing one uh so we've got three screws let's see where they are we've got number one right here i'm getting out of focus number one uh then we have one that's supposed to be right here and then we have the one back there so let's actually get in the view that you can see that one so it's very important also to use a really long thin point with a fresh uh thin point head i mean if you could strip these screws out very easily so I recommend these long Harbor Freight. You actually are in a different country, so that might not be available, but these long screwdrivers are really vital whenever it comes to replacing these heads when you do your adjustment. So I'm just gonna get that screw out of there. Actually, I skipped the skip step. Hold on one second. Back this up, get this one out. All right, good magnet that'll get that off there. The head is good, but we got this little alignment spring important. We don't lose this, so we're just gonna go ahead and pinch that. Get it out of there. There we go. All right, so now we are gonna grab that last screw. This one was missing one, so. Only have two to take out of this head. Now that we've done so, we are done. So now we are going to remove this head. We're gonna pull backwards. Uh, try not to lose that little grounding pin right there. You see that little metal Thing coming out of that's to ground the print heads very important to keep it that's your head rank right there all right so what we're going to do now is uh take off this manifold right here i can't do that with holding this holding this uh uh phone so i'm going to take them two screws out right there all right I'll go ahead and uh, pause this 
All right, so now that I've done that, I've got my adapter off, and as you can see, I've made sure that the uh, that little bracket's there. Oh, I dropped a screw. I didn't take those all the way out. So I just want to make sure that that bracket or that grounding metal's right there. Make sure it stays on, and we're going to attach it to the head the exact same way it came off. Uh, again, I'm going to have to put this down to do so. All right, now we threw the uh, print head in there. And this is why it's important to use a uh, long driver because we're going to start getting into uh, the damper area. I actually haven't screwed it down yet. Uh, I went ahead and replaced both dampers. While you're in here, might as well replace the dampers. And uh, be careful with the dampers you use. I recommend highly OEM. Uh, these are what actually filter out, filters out the imperfections in the ink and allows things into your print head that could potentially clog, clog it up. So make sure you use some good dampers. Dampers, cap tops, always recommended to use OEM always and it's not because i'm trying to sell anybody anything i do not sell parts but i learned from the hard way so make sure you're using oem parts these things can leak uh if you're you know if you value your car you're likely not going to shoot you know go around the internet searching for the uh, cheapest oil filter so make sure we don't skimp on the cap tops and dampers very important all right so the the next step we would do is uh when it comes to tightening these uh these set screws we're going to take in what I like to do is give it a good tighten. I tighten it up and then I'll back it off just a, just a quarter of a turn on each one after I tighten it. Again, let's see if you can see it. Uh, it's hard to see the screw, so I'm gonna get in here, tighten it tight, then back it up. That's gonna be important when we do our alignments. Again, uh, repeat that process. This one's already tight, tight, and loosen. We're gonna need that because this needs to be free. Uh, this needs to have a little wiggle, wiggle room when we do our alignments. Very important. I'll send you the manual for that. I'm not going to have time to show you the alignments today. Uh, well, I might. Uh, let's see. We're gonna, going to pop this. See, I wasn't going to build. I didn't have no intentions of working on a, a uh, SP today, but I might go ahead and do it anyway. All right. Might as well get her going. So, All right. So now we've got that spring in there like it's supposed to be. I'm going to go ahead and put my dampers on again. I used OEM dampers. Uh, make sure you remember the correct orientation. Always yellow to the back. Yellow is the back one. All right. Then we've got our good old magenta in the front and our head cables. Again, it'd be now, now would be a good time just to inspect them cables one more time. Make sure that they, uh, the, the pins are good. Make sure there's nothing bent going to cause you any issues. It's hard to focus in on these and the reflections make them look bad, but they look good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and pop those in there nice and straight. Straight. Make sure they, they're in there all the way nice and snug. All right. Now number two. Let's go ahead and throw that in there. Sorry, it's hard with the camera. Nice and tight. Double check them. Then I'm going to loop these around. All right. So we got the top one's going to go to the right side. There we go. I'm going to make sure it's nice and tight. Make sure there's no ink or anything there. Then I'm going to do the next one. There we go. I went ahead and double check those. Make sure nothing came undone. There we go. That is success. Then we're going to use these two alignment. Uh, this right here goes forward and backwards adjustments. And then your slant is going to be a little Allen wrench that goes right inside here right there uh, that'll be in the manual i'll send you the service manual there we have it all right so now i'm ready to throw my next one in there and i'll see if we can't do these adjustments hopefully this helps all right so now we're not all back together got the heads in there i'm gonna go ahead and double check my connectors make sure that they're all good always want to man i triple quadruple check each one of these connectors very important you don't want a main board repair make sure there's no ink signs of ink on anything nice uh this one i'm going to replace the cap tops here in a second these have my most despised cap tops this clear tube these are bad cap tops junk garbage do not buy them buy oem so i've got to change that uh and that's what i'm going to do right now i just want to highlight oem cap tops very important or you could have the same problem and think that you're you're you have another problem you're going to chase ghost errors you're going to say oh i replaced the cap top that couldn't be it and in fact, it is that bogus cap, cap top. So always OEM, very important, guys. All right, so now that we have all that done, I went ahead and did a, a powerful cleaning, see how these things flow. Brand new cap tops. So then replace the 
the cap valve do a little wipe down down there. Ink should be flowing pretty dang good. New, new heads, new dampers, new uh, cap tops. As you see, it's just flowing like it should. If you would have used, if I would have used aftermarket cap tops, this likely wouldn't be happening right now. I promise you. They are the devil. So many people sell me machines that they were so close. They were so close. I go pick them up. I'm like, oh, if they would have used the correct parts, they would have been uh, working and they would have been back up and running. So make sure you're using the correct parts. I promise you, I'm not steering you in the wrong direction. These things are cheap. I hate ordering them. I hate you know, the, the cheap parts. Uh, it's been the aftermarket ones are cheap. Uh, the uh, OEM are expensive, but it's the right way to go. Everybody wants the cheapest, the cheapest, the cheapest inks, the cheapest everything. I mean, people that aren't making money, if you're not making money with your printer, you definitely need to contact me. I've made a million dollars with one of these printers. Same exact one. We are, we are rolling. You see everything's nice and tidy, nice and clean. Uh, we're in service mode right now. If you need to get into service mode, check out our other video. I'm not gonna do that in this video. Nice, we got the black, the black cables, not that cheap, clear stuff. Everything's flowing perfectly. Another thing I don't like is the uh, cheap wipers. They're a little bit too tall and they cause grinding noises. So, so all that stuff, you know, if you want to buy motors and encoder strips and, and I say aftermarket, they do make some good ones, the encoder sensor, but cap tops and dampers are my number one. Always OEM. No matter which model of printer, always OEM. And I'm making this video for... Uh, my buddy that I've talked to him many times down in, down in uh, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, he purchased a printer. Unfortunately, it wasn't for me, and it had some problems. He had to limb portal in, and uh, I'm here. You can see I'm helping him to get his back up and running. Even though I didn't sell him his machine, I love helping people. Don't be afraid to reach out. Here we go. We are good. Another thing, you see these print heads, how they have the... The white writing, if you're buying brand new print heads and you have that old gold writing, somebody's selling you some old heads, this is what you should have this uh, uh, screen printed white look on your print head. So let's see if we do a test print real quick, see, see what we got going on. All right, well, I can tell you right now what we have here going on, Gillis Flown, we have uh, a case where the fuse or transistor is bad on the main board. This printer I have not inspected, so. Uh, that's what we have going on. If you have this problem, then you have uh, something going on with the fuser or transistor, and that's likely why these people sold this machine. They didn't know what was going on, and I know what's going on, so we're going to go ahead and fix that, and we'll be right back to it. All right, so while I'm, uh, before I get this main board repaired, uh, here we go. This is important. This is the head rank. It's on the box of your print head, the 66Z number. We need to input these into the uh, service menu. If you're not in service mode, then uh, watch my other video. But we're going to go to one to go menu, service menu, head rank, head one. Head one is the left head. Head two is the uh, second head. So head one, we would go here and we go, so I'll go ahead and do this, six. I'm reading it off the box, six, Z, Z. Uh, three, four, so we got three, this thing will be a four, three, seven, all right, now we've got UX, UX, uh, U, uh, Z, go backwards to go to Z, all right, Z, and we've got VV, this is very vital you put these in here, uh, if you want optimum print results uh then this is a t then we'll just keep scrolling bam 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 if you're using the gold heads and they have more numbers uh then we got zero zero v v dot dot and then mine is uh h so h then make sure you set hit the enter button set all right so right there that's set it's not accepting it for some reason Let's see what I did wrong. Uh, six, oh, that's what it is. It's, mine's six, six. Uh, so if you don't have it in there right, it'll do that. So six, six, all right, so now we're set. Everything should be right. All right, 
and I hit enter. All right, it took it. I had one digit off, so it didn't take it. So now it's fine. Uh, then we just repeat, rinse and repeat. Uh, on head two, we'd go ahead and do it. I'll go ahead and do it for you. Let's go through it. We got six B, six B, V, uh, three, and mine's an A, A. Then we got three, five, five. Then we got T, T, and we got T, and mine's U, U, B, B, R, S is correct. Alright, and we're going to go here to zero, zero, N. And then H, F, G, H. All right, press enter. Bam, it accepted it. Now we're ready. All right, that part is done. All right, so the first thing we want to do uh, now that we have the heads installed is uh, go to the service menu. Again, there's another video with the service menu. And we are going to go down over. And we are going to go down to, let's see. Head adjust. Then we're going to do the bias first and foremost. Press enter is going to prompt us to hit enter. <coughs> we can open this cover as we are. All right, so here we have the bias printing, and I'm going to go ahead and try to zoom in here for you right into the center. All right, we're going to see the, the center where they meet, and let's see if I can make this better. Uh, we need these lines to match it perfectly and the best way to do this is with a loop but you can also use the zoom function on your camera to make sure you're nice and accurate so i can see the black head uh the black head needs to go over to the left a bit so uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go here and stick in my island wrench let's see if you can see this i've got this little hole right here in the front and it goes to right there so i'm gonna stick my island wrench in right there and i know it needs to go to the the uh, left so that's the way i'm going to turn my island wrench i'm going to turn it counterclockwise to the left just a tad not much i'm just going to turn it there and i'm going to look back at my my magenta let's see the magenta it probably can go to the right just a smudge i'm pretty happy with that bam and i'm going to reprint this real quick see what happens All right, so I'm going to go ahead and look right here. Bam, bam. Let's see what we have going on. Oh, yeah, she looks great. She looks great. So that part's done. I'm going to go ahead and come over here to the menu now. We're going to go right here. And now we're going to hit the back button. Now we're going to go down to the vertical. We're going to adjust the vertical. So I hit the enter button. It's always going to ask me to hit the enter button, so we're going to go back down here. Alright, so on this we want to make sure that these match. So let's look at the, this print. Alright, so... Alright, so I'm looking at it. I think the magenta can just go a hair up. Uh, for this for this one, we're gonna <coughs> use these two knobs, okay? You spin the head to the right, and I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. I'm gonna make the head, I'm just gonna spin it to the right, and you'll see it moving. You'll see the head moving backwards. If you look at it, you'll see it's it, it's a moving. Um, it looks like, I don't know if you can see it very well. Uh, it is a moving, but it's doing it in a minute amount. I'm gonna go ahead and Push it up, make sure that it's in there. So we're gonna go ahead and redo this test real quick. So I, since I just messed it up, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Right now it was it was pretty perfect, which it usually isn't whenever you replace a printhead. It's usually not perfect. So let's go ahead and repeat this test. All right, so we're gonna go here and I am missing a nozzle uh, in the black that I, well, actually a couple of them. I haven't even done another cleaning on it since I changed these out. Uh, so 
Right now you can see the magenta is way off. Right there is good, but I just uh, turned it to the right and you can see the right brought it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back up. I'm gonna go ahead and spin this again. All right, let the printer go back up. Hit the enter button. Alright, and there you can see I went a little bit too far, so I'm just going to back it up a little bit. That should be good, and that should get me where I need to go. So, that's all there is to it. I think I'm pretty happy with that to make this video shorter. So, we're done with that test, and then we'll get into the next one. Alright, so... I All right, so as you can see, all right, so as you can see, we've got that one where it needs to be. Uh, the next thing that we're going to want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, tighten up the head screws. We're done at this point with, with any type of a mechanical adjustment, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten those down and be very careful not to move anything around. We want to start with the, the front screw, so we're going to want to go just like this. We want to go to this one, and this is why having a long screwdriver is very important. So this is important the order that you uh, you screw these in. Uh, so that one, then we're gonna go back here to this side on the, the right print head. We're gonna tighten that up. Very important to have a long reach screwdriver. Then we're gonna go to the this one on this side. This is the order that we, we uh, do these. This one's always the last. It's important because you can throw your uh, alignment off if you do it any other way. So we're going to go ahead and one right there. All right, then we're going to move back to this one. Again, being careful not to bump the dampers or uh, hit anything electrical. Don't want to touch anything electrical. All right, we're going to tighten it up. Uh, there is a torque to these. I usually can do it by feel. Uh, I don't have a torque gauge anymore. And they're expensive. I, I don't think there's much science to having a torque. But we want the right amount of torque on these screws. Pull straight out. Now we're good with that. So the next thing we want to do is go here. We did our vertical. We're going to hit the back button. Now we're going to go down to our horizontal adjustment. Now on the 300 V it's a little simpler. Uh, on the 540 you gotta do things at head height low and then you have to raise the head height and do it at head height high. So uh, the 300 V it doesn't have a high or low adjustment on the head. So we've only got one way, or we only got one height on it. This one we have two, so. So again, we're going to get in here and zoom in, see what we can find. Uh, it's going to actually, it's going to ask me for the head height high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this little lever right here. I'm just going to flip it up, that little lever, flipped it up and pressed the enter key. Now we're going to do it in head height high. All right, so now again, uh, it's vital that we zoom in so we can really see what's going on so you can accurately dial these in. Uh, it's gonna be hard in this video to zoom in, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, DT1 low. I'm gonna try to find the straightest one. I might have to turn off the uh, flash so you can see better. No, that ain't helping you out. Uh, All right, there we go, as you can see. And you can see uh, somewhere around, I'd say negative four. You can use halves too. You could go with negative four and a half, but I'm happy with negative four there. So I'm gonna go here to the machine and I'm gonna go to, uh, I'm gonna push down. I'm gonna go to DT1 low and I'm gonna put negative four. That's where I'm happy at. And I'm gonna press enter so that it sets. Now it's time for DT3. So I'm gonna go here to the next one. 
and this is a little bit lighter so it's a lot harder to see um, let's go um, I think I'm happy with negative three right there negative three enter all right now I'm gonna do DT one high here we go let's see if you can see this one here we are on high uh, right now it's, uh, that red dot means it's current setting so we are gonna go with let's see this is hard to uh, with my phone and not the loop uh, again I think we're gonna go with negative four and then with this one we are gonna go and I can't see it with my phone at all I'm gonna have to actually look uh, negative four that doesn't look good let's see what negative two looks like you guys really can't see it uh, negative two looks pretty good so we're just gonna roll with that I'm gonna put those inputs so we got negative four again for right here oh you're not looking at the screen we'll go negative four Go to DT3 high and hmm. I know we're off there. You guys aren't seeing much. I'm trying to do this with my eyes and my phone. It's kind of hard to see with my phone right now. So we know that the, the, the positive numbers are way off. We can see that. So we're going to. Just look at the ones that are off, and we're just going to scroll our way back here to the... Right now it's set to negative 2. Negative 2 looks pretty good to me, a little bit off. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to do this one at uh, negative 2.5. I'm, I'm, I'm happier with negative 2.5 on this one. Uh, so now negative 2.5. We're done with that test. All right, that test done. The next one we're going to need to do... Oh, I got out of it. So next one. The last one... And I think I just kind of threw this machine together. This thing had been sitting here. Uh, I just threw it together. I'm kind of thinking I need an encoder strip or I need to do some encoder adjustments because you really can't see those very well. I can see I'm, I, right here I don't have no, it just says, it just says uh, T1 high and T3 high. I'm not sure what the hell's going on right there. I guess maybe uh, as you can see right here, I'm right at the edge of the paper. So that could be the reason why, uh, but the high ones they look a little a little hard to read so that's telling me that I may need to replace the encoder strip the encoder sensor I may have to do something something's going on uh, that does not look uh, right so we'll fix that but now we're gonna jump into the next setting all right so our next set of settings is gonna be the bi-directional default I'm gonna want to go ahead and lower this lever right here uh, to head height low because it's gonna ask me to anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and Click over, hit the test print. And there she goes, she's rocking and rolling. I won't make you uh, watch through this, I'm gonna pause it until it finishes. Uh, it's gonna make me uh, run a head height high next. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do all that and we'll jump back in. All right, so again, we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process. So I'm gonna make sure I go past my uh, first uh, uh, print. So we're gonna go right here to DT1 low, and you can usually follow the bad ones. Just follow it down. See, all right, let's find where they start getting better. Right about here. All right. So, looking at this test, I'm gonna go with mm, a little off there. I'm gonna go with plus 20 and a half. That's what I'm gonna roll here. Plus 20 and a half. All right. Then we're gonna make sure we push enter. Oh. Not until we get done with the H2. Let's do H2. Important to press enter because if you don't, you're not setting anything and nothing is changing. So we're going to go back here. How uh, we was at plus 20 and a half there. This one. Zoom in a little further. And then the more you zoom, the better you can see to really dial these babies in. Uh, the naked eye, you can't see a whole lot. I'm not too happy with somewhere around I'm not happy with 18 or 19 but somewhere in there uh, 
Let's look over here. Oh, that's way off. Uh, I think plus 17 and a half is what I'm going to roll with there. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, save that in. I'm just going to repeat this for the next ones. We'll go ahead and uh, jump off here. Uh, we're, we've been recording for a while, so thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps you out. My boy uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, sorry, I don't remember your name. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this helps you uh, get your print heads in alignment so you can have great print quality. Thanks again for watching.